What do you guys think? No, because I mean, I ha like I haven't used Molly in in a long time. Uh, look at this. What's this over here? She's got this tattoos. Two squirrels. Squirrels. I think she's still on my Faction Wars team. Hydra. I pretty much replaced her with Necmothar. She used to be my Provoke champion, and I was using her as a mischief tank for a while. Then I got Necmo, and my Provokes seem to, strangely enough, and I think it's because he's moving faster and he's able to decrease the speed, I think the Provokes were a lot more so consistent. But Molly's still an A1 champion when it comes to uh, Arena, the dungeons, as well as um, using her in Hydra. But as you can see, I haven't really you know, used her in a while. Uh, A1 attacks one enemy. Decreases or increases damage if there's an HP burn. A2, this is her bread, butter, sugar, cake, all of it. This is it right here. Provoke on a three turn cooldown and then places a reflect damage. Now, why is this important? Why is this really good? One in Hydra, the Hydra head that cleanses, the head of cleansing, the head of decay, will not be able to take a turn that it wants to take. If, like, let's say it wants to use its A2 or the A3 is available, it can't because it's provoked. Reflect damage anytime a Hydra head or even an arena, somebody tries to attack, 30% gets reflected. Like, have you have you tried to go up against a Snick Track and you hit it with like a Rotos and you wonder why why your Rotos is lying dead? Because of that reflect damage. It's also kind of the same case with somebody like Geomancer who reflects damage with his HP burn. Same thing here. Whether it's a Hydra head or somebody in arena, this move right here is awesome. Not only will Provoke help you out in Hydra, but in Arena, this champion will make it so that your opponents can't take a turn and do what they need to do. Revives an ally with 50% HP and half their turn meter and then places a block damage on that ally. The heal that they, ch that they receive is going to be boosted uh, 65% when fully booked. That's on a four turn cooldown. Pretty reliable. Revive, but basically it's this right here. Provoke with a reflect. And then fills the turn meter of all allies by 15% when this champion is hit. Fills the turn meters of all allies by 25% when this champion is hit by a boss. Now, with that being said, Molly used to be the absolute sauce in Arena. And I'm not saying that she's not, but I would argue that maybe she lost some of said sauce because of Torment. 20% 20, uh, 20 chance of placing Freeze when they receive a buff or have their turn meter filled. That's why I don't see Molly so much in Arena anymore. If you choose your fights, I would still say that she's she's pretty good in Arena. You could definitely use her in Arena. I'm not saying she's completely useless. You can still use her in the Cursed City. You can still use her in Dungeons if you have nobody else. Like Still a great champion to have on your roster, especially with the revive uh, in Faction Wars. Blessing I have on her is Ward of the Fallen. I honestly didn't think too much about what Blessing to have. I, I kind of just... I was like, oh, okay, uh, decreased damage received. I want Molly as a support champion to survive as long as possible. That's what I went with. Now, I don't know what I was going for here. This is an outdated build. I don't like this, this, um, this weapon and this shield is okay. Um, these boots are okay, I guess. So I'm going to rebuild Molly. What did I do here, right? I picked survival mode, highest effective HP uh, possible. I didn't want to take gear off of anybody else. Because I don't use Molly, and I'd probably only use her in the context of Centranos nowadays, I didn't want to take gear off of anybody else. We wanted to go fast, we wanted to cycle through her moves as fast as possible, especially in Hydra. Or if you're in Arena, you still want her to go really fast so she can place the CC on all your enemies, because it's an AoE provoke, right? And when they hit Molly, they're going to be uh, receiving some of that reflect damage. On top of that, when you're going up against Hydra, you do not want your buffs stolen, especially reflect damage. That is the last thing you want. You do not want your reflect damage to get stolen. Of course, there is still a 3% chance, but 400 res, I think, is a good amount of resistance to have. Sets. Does Molly need a specific set? I think she's excellent without having any specific sets. Regen Immortal would be nice, but I don't think a lot of people are going to have that. And honestly, I checked myself. I don't have decent amount of spare regen immortal gear so i'm not going to bother with that i'm just going to do completely stats over sets here and i think she's excellent in that sense i think she's going to do very well without even having any specific sets however it looks like this is going to give us two perception sets perception is nice to have speed accuracy one more time for the people in the back hp speed accuracy these are all the pieces of gear and there you go. But here are the total stats that we have. 
almost 70k. I'm pretty sure if I ascend it and enchant it, we could definitely get to about 70, maybe even 80k HP. 4600 defense, it's solid. The more defense you have, the tankier she's going to be. So survivability stats, HP, defense, speed. Try to get her as fast as possible. So she's going at 272. You want her to cycle through those moves as quickly as possible. But yeah, 400 is basically what I go for. 400 res, 400 accuracy. So in terms of masteries, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy these masteries. I'm going to go with my standard support survivability masteries and um, CC. Sorry, CC support standard uh, standardized masteries. Taking extra accuracy, extra accuracy here. I'm gonna go ahead and take Lore of Steel. I do want to take Cycle of Magic so that there is a chance to decrease the Provoke skill. And then we could also take, um, what do you call it? Uh, increase the chance of placing. So Sniper's not gonna help. You, if you wanted extra accuracy, you could take the accuracy, go down the accuracy route. But I think we're we're sitting pretty already so we're not going to have to bother with accuracy let's go ahead and, and get back to this in a bit we're going to take extra res i'm definitely taking um improved parry so that we can receive less damage from crit hits taking extra healing and shield chance to remove a random debuff some damage mitigation here now i think you're going to want to take cycle of revenge so anytime an ally is attacked with a crit hit Molly will get a boost to turn meter, or I guess like a 50% chance anytime an ally is hit. 15%. So then she can cycle through her moves a lot sooner. We can take a Bulwark and we can take a Fearsome Presence. Fearsome Presence would be nice to increase the chances of placing Provoke. Now, I think Molly's Provoke. Now, I'm pretty sure that her Provoke is already at 100%. I, I, never, I never really understand because sometimes I see champions listed with skills that say 100% chance or it's irresistible. But sometimes I don't see that here. Like I don't see, oh, it's 85%, but it books up to 100% or anything like that here. It doesn't say it. It just says places provoke. So I'm assuming it's 100%. Maybe Fearsome Presence is going to help. I don't know. But I think I want to take Bulwark. That is to keep your entire team uh, alive a lot longer. Molly does place more buffs technically than she does debuffs. So I'm going to go ahead and take Rapid Response over Arcane Celerity. Again, we want her to take as many turns as possible. So that's what we're doing here. If you wanted to, you could take Selfless Defender so that if you do happen to use her, uh, use her in Arena, then she could take some of the blunt, the brunt force in the beginning in case you get sped out. I'm going to go with Counter Attack. Like I would technically think this helps her move a little bit faster. To get that revive off so yeah we'll take that I, I threw this team together by the way this is not optimized but molly was able to go first and that's what you want okay now when she does go first she can hit that provoke now all of these champions here can't do anything except for attack molly and you're gonna see some of that damage reflected uh whenever they try to hit molly i'm gonna skip out on on using our bonds as a2 just so we can see that so 3410 you you saw uh, let's go ahead and get rid of Sun Wukong. It's not coming back. And yeah, so having Provoke up, the Reflect Damage, you see that, how that's going? Super cool. Super awesome to have. There you go, Rhonda. Chop right through. And let's do this. Get rid of them. And boom. Oh no, Armand's. Calm down, dude. We're about to kill. What are you doing over here, man? Sometimes I like our mods, and sometimes I'm just like, dude, let them die. Why are you why are you sheeping around? And just for fun, I'm going to take Molly into Hydra, and we have a dwarf only team here. So the head of decay isn't going to come out here first because we're not in that rotation. But Molly still can place the reflect damage. But yeah, we're gonna wait for the head of decay to pop out, and then I'll show you guys what she can do against the uh, head of decay here. I guess technically Tormund could do the provoke as well. There you go. So this is the head that I was talking about, the head of mischief. He tried to take all of these buffs. Now, because Molly currently has the most or had the most amount of buffs because of that bone armor, he tried to take it from her. But because she has um, high resist, we didn't have to worry about that. And that's really nice to have against the head of, of, uh, of mischief. That way you don't have to worry about, oh, are my buffs going to get stolen? Oh, by the way, we're only on normal. 
Um, just, just for the fun of it. I don't plan to keep this key. I'm kind of just showing you guys. So you guys saw right there, Molly was able to place the Provoke on this head for two turns. Two turns, meaning the next two turns, this head can't do anything, effectively making the head of Decay obsolete. It also kind of helped to have Tormund in here because Tormund actually uh, placed the Provoke with his A3 as well. 